and so we can say that metallic properties increase down the group so this is the case for metallic and non metallic properties so there will be a question which will ask you which is the most metallic element in the periodic table and which is the most non metallic element in the periodic table so if you see the metallic properties will increase down the group and they will decrease along a period so if you go to the right side you will get non metals but in the right side if you go down then the non metallic property will decrease because the metallic property will increase so if you want the most non metallic element you should go to the extreme right but not go down because going down will decrease the non metallic property so the extreme right we'll ignore the noble gases because they uh, they they are not in the picture of metal metals and non metals so we can say that fluorine because they do not just i mean noble gases uh, don't react only so how can they be called as metals or non metals you need to have an electron to give away or to accept so, to be called a metal or non metal so it will uh, fluorine over here is towards the extreme right and to the top so fluorine will be our most non metallic element and if you want to find most metallic it would be the element exactly diagonally opposite to fluorine why because the metallic property increases down the group but if we go to the right side they will decrease since the non metallic property will increase so down the group but towards the extreme left we will have the most metallic metal element so it will be rubidium no no it will not be rubidium it's actually francium so they will not ask you most metallic because it's not in your syllabus francium but they can ask you most non metallic which is fluorine actually francium is also radioactive so it has its nucleus is only not stable so the metallic property and not metallic property are way too far away to think and now we come to the topic which we had skipped which was mendeleev's periodic table now in the time of mendeleev he created a periodic table after newlands i mean in the middle a lot of scientists created the periodic table but all failed but this was a huge success let us see how now at the time of mendeleev 63 elements were known and now 118 are known so what mendeleev said he carried on newland's law of octaves but with modifications he created his law mendeleev's periodic law which said that properties of elements are a function of their atomic masses now in the modern periodic table 
if you remember we said that the properties of elements are a function of atomic numbers and obviously that's true because uh, i mean it's proven true but in Men mendeleev was obviously before uh, the modern periodic table he said that the properties are a function of their atomic masses and then he created his periodic table and examined the properties and physical properties like boiling point melting point in chemical properties he examined reaction with hydrogen and oxygen why because these two are very reactive and they combine with almost all the elements of the till known till then so that is why he uh, thought that reaction with hydrogen and oxygen will give him his chemical properties since all the elements of the periodic table would have some or the other reaction with these two elements so this is another question that why did he choose reaction with hydrogen and oxygen as chemical properties so the answer is because hydrogen and oxygen are very reactive and they react with almost all the elements in the periodic table in that time i mean it, uh, all the elements known at that time so using this he created his periodic table which also contained groups and periods the groups were 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so in group 1 i mean he studied the reaction of or the oxides i mean he studied the formation of the oxides and hydrides this this is oxides this is hydrides i mean the compound formed by the reaction with oxygen this is the compound formed by the reaction with hydrogen so he studied the elements and saw that group 1 the oxides were of the form of r2o where r is any element of group 1 and the hydride was rh in group 2 it was ro and this was rh2 i mean hydrides just got increased like rh2 rh3 rh4 then again rh3 rh2 rh and this had no hydrides and this was r2o3 then this was ro2 this was r2o5 this was ro3 this was r2o7 and this was ro4 now he placed hydrogen over here now as i am writing the all the elements you can check that the oxides and hydrides are actually matching see rh is hh which is h2 so it's hydrogen gas and the oxide is h2o so that is also correct after hydrogen he kept this place black then he had the same things lithium beryllium boron all the elements we we'll we had studied in the modern periodic table right up till calcium they were all included in mendeleev's periodic table the ones which were not discovered were after calcium so these are all the same boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine then sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine and noble gases were not discovered that time they were discovered very late because they are very inert they do not react with anything and they are present in very small quantities so that is why it took much of pain to discover them so basically this is our period 
this is period two, this is three. And then in four, what he did was he gave two slots. There was a first series and a second series. In the first series, there was potassium. In the second series, there was copper. I mean, he wanted to say that hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium belong to group one, but copper, although it belongs to group one and it forms CO2O and COH, but it does not resemble the properties of hydrogen. Rather, it resembles the properties of the coming elements below it. So this was one slot. Then there was calcium and zinc was over here. So was another one. Then here scandium was in on the side and gallium was over here. That means that scandium did not resemble boron and aluminium, but gallium did. And scandium resembled the group below it. Then there was titanium and germanium. Then there was vanadium, arsenic, chromium, selenium. And there was manganese and bromine. Now, if you remember that in Newland, in Newland's law of octaves, he had placed cobalt and nickel in the same position so that they can be grouped in the same uh, i mean they have similar properties so uh, they they should be placed in one group but they did not have a difference of eight in their atomic masses i mean they were they did not have eight elements between them so he had to place them together in the same slot but it did not work because the elements with which they were placed did not resemble the properties of cobalt and nickel. So what Mendeleev did, he placed iron, cobalt and nickel in this group together. And so they were placed in the same group and they had similar properties. So that is why they uh, he could justify that they uh, they the periodic table which he made was correct so this was the fourth and this was the first series of the fourth group and this is the second series then again there is fifth and sixth we'll not go into fifth and sixth now now let us see what he meant by this table So he made these periods and these groups and he created a lot of, uh, I mean, he resolved a lot of misunderstandings of the, I mean, not misunderstandings, lot of shortcomings of the earlier periodic tables. Now, how? Now, see, this copper in Newland's law of octaves was not in a very uh, good position because it was with uh, another group whose properties did not resemble with that of copper. But over here, what he did very intelligently, he placed it over here, but he did not place it with the group. Although it forms Cu2 and CuH, Zn forms ZnO, ZnH2, scandium over here forms Sc2O3, but he did not place it like that because they did not match the properties of the third group. So for that, he had to create this two series. And in the fifth group, we had rubidium over here and silver over here. So rubidium matched these and copper matched silver. So in this way, his periodic table became a great success. And over here we had strontium which matched this group and zinc with cadmium. So with this he managed to create the same elements in the same group.
say uh, elements with similar properties in the same group but there were some limitations to this also now let us not go into limitations first 